To be a fan is to suffer. You can't win them all, and in no sport is that more evident than in baseball. Today, we take a deep dive once again into the world of America's pastime, as we're exploring what many diehard fans can relate to, the misery index. Now, we all know that being a fan of a Major League Baseball team comes with a roller coaster of emotions, the highs of a walk-off home run, the elation of a no-hitter, and the joys of a World Series ring. Well, some of us can relate to that last one. But what about those heartbreaking moments, the frustrating losing streaks, the missed playoff windows, the cheap owner that won't spend, or the ones that don't know what to spend on? That's where the misery index comes in. It's a way of quantifying just how badly fans have been treated by their team. Think of it as a barometer of baseball sorrow, a numerical reflection of the ups and downs that we all experience as loyal fans. But how does it work? Well, the misery index takes into account various factors that contribute to a fan's anguish. We look at a team's performance, postseason droughts, and off-the-field decisions. We dive deep into the heartache and disappointment that can accompany the love we have for our teams. Everyone says the best fans in baseball are in St. Louis. Is that because they're great fans or because they have a team that doesn't make them suffer? The misery index is a score for each MLB team that encapsulates the collective pain felt by the fan base. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and let me know that if you think your team's misery index is fair. Let's get started by discussing how we came up with the numbers you'll see. Since this is a discussion of fan bases, we'll begin in 2005. This is the first year that each team that currently plays in the MLB were in their current city. Every team gets a season score. That score is broken up into two parts, their on-the-field performance and their off-the-field performance, with a couple of modifiers we'll discuss later. First, on-the-field. As divisions in baseball are important, teams are pitted against their performance within their division. We start with their record. Each team is assigned a number 1 through 5, based on where they finished in their division. The Astros were a bit of a toss-up at times, as they changed leagues and divisions, but it didn't really affect the final numbers. Our second on-field factor is playoff score. If your team made it to the playoffs, that's a negative 1 to your score. As the higher your score is, the more miserable your fan base is. Getting to the championship series will earn you a playoff score of negative 2, and losing the World Series will garner a negative 3. It's great getting to the World Series, but you didn't win it. As they say, winning cures all, so winning the World Series will get you a negative 30 points, regardless of your off-the-field performance. No one cares how you won the World Series, only that you won it. There's a couple of other things that fans care about if your team doesn't win at all, and that is in the player's performance. Hence, a negative 1 is awarded if your team had any of the following. Cy Young winner, MVP, or Rookie of the Year. It's always special and gives hope for the future when one of your own is acknowledged as the best. The final modifier for the on-the-field performance is the one-point reduction for a 100-win season, as that really gets the fan base excited, and a plus one for a 100-loss season, as little is more brutal than a season that you're out of by May. Fans want an owner they can trust and a smart front office to believe in. That is where the off-the-field score comes in. This score is determining by subtracting 60 wins from the team's total, as every team should win 60 games, and divide that by the team's payroll. This will determine how much money each team paid to win a game over 60 wins. The teams are then ranked against their division opponents and given a number 1 through 5. Finally, if your team makes the playoffs, you get a negative 1, because whether you spent wisely or poorly, the goal was the playoffs and you made it. Our last modifier deals with stadiums and World Series hangovers. If a team gets a new stadium, they will get a negative 5 for 6 years. There's nothing like the first time you walk into your team's brand new stadium. Even if your team sucks, you can at least do it in style and be distracted by all the new bells and whistles. After about six years, the glow of a new stadium wears off and just becomes home. We all wish that our teams could win every year, but the reality is that most of us would love to see them win even just once. With that in mind, after a World Series win, a negative five is given for the next five years to a team to reflect the afterglow and the joy that must come with a World Series victory. As a Met fan, I don't really know how to calculate the effects of winning a World Series or how long the afterglow lasts, so if you think my calculations are wrong, let me know. Finally, it wouldn't be fair to start all teams at zero, as some teams like the Marlins had won two World Series in seven years, while the Cubs, White Sox, and Red Sox had suffered for decades. So I ran some numbers on time of team's existence and number of championships factored in droughts and ranked them, giving each fan base a number between 0 and 29. A fan base like the Nationals started with a 0, while the long-suffering Cubs received a 29. In the end, it all breaks down like this. A negative score means your team has treated you right and done so for a while. This is rarefied air, and as a fan, you should shut up and enjoy it. When fans hear you complain, all they see is a rich person complaining that their yacht broke down. You have a good so enjoy it. A score of 0 to 50 is happy town. You may face the ups and downs of a regular season, but overall, your team is doing things right and treating you properly. Here we find the teams that spend right and push deep into the playoffs. You might be down in your luck now, but your team has proved that they can make it happen. You might not have a dynasty, but at least you've been to the promised land for a vacation. 50 to 79, the justifiably unhappy. 
Here we have teams in the limbo of the misery index. Teams that may have won, but have faced long droughts in their past, or are in the midst of one now, but spend right and make things happen when their window is open. These teams could go either way. A great run, and it's a ticket to happy town. Or there are a few bad decisions away from misery. 80 through 109 misery. This is it. This is the home to teams that other fans fear to tread. This is where teams are memed on for their mere existence and curses are born. These are the teams that are rarely thought of, but when they are, they are thoughts of either pity or for laughs. 110 plus the lands beyond hope. This is a place worse than misery, a place reserved for teams so bad for so long that even a World Series wouldn't wash away the stink of misery. These are teams that don't spend, and when they do, they do it poorly. They don't win, and when they do, they get booted from the playoffs quickly. If misery is a state of mind, these are the teams that personify it. Great. Now that all that explanation is done, let's get down to the nitty gritty and get started on our journey through the last 18 seasons of baseball to see which fans have had their loyalty tested the most and which are set on easy mode. Let's begin our journey on the road to misery. This is the Misery Index. Let's begin in the AL East, a powerhouse of money and World Series victories. It's a tough place to live if you're not spending big. Our current frontrunner for least miserable fan base are the Boston Red Sox. If you made that statement 20 years ago, no one that knows anything about baseball would believe you, but here we are. The Red Sox were coming off their first World Series victory in 86 years in 2004 and started with an initial value of 5. This might seem high considering their history, but this was their fifth title. It's not my fault they like to win them in bunches. With the second title coming in 2007, adding a negative 10 modifier by opening day 2008, they were already the least miserable team in baseball. With nine postseason appearances in the 18 seasons we looked at, along with three titles, it's clear to see that if you're a Red Sox fan and you dare to complain about your team, you've become the very thing you've always hated, a Yankee fan. Coming in second on our current list are the fans that everyone loves to praise, the Cardinals. They opened with a score of 14 being in the midst of a 22-year World Series title drought in 2005. Aided by a deep postseason run and securing both the MVP and Cy Young Awards that year, the Cardinals were well on their way to turning that frown upside down. A year later, their World Series drought was over, and with the new stadium, the Cardinals' days as even a remotely miserable fan base were done, as they've been living in the negative zone for almost two decades. Cardinal fans may be great, but according to my numbers, they also haven't been tested. Congrats on the top spot in the NL, but to me a fan base that doesn't suffer can't be called the best fans in baseball. In third is another team you wouldn't have thought to be so high 20 years ago. San Francisco Giants. Having never won a World Series in California, the Giants opened with a 27 misery score. They had good teams in the past, even great ones, but they played in a terrible stadium and hadn't had near the success as their rivals the Dodgers. A beautiful new stadium on the bay would begin to ease their burdens, but after more postseason disappointment, the Giants opened the 2010 season with a running misery score of 59, well in the justifiable unhappy camp. But the mini dynasty that was the Giants of the early 20 teens saw their misery score completely turn around to a 2017 opening score of negative 68. This is the type of turnaround every fan base dreams of. And while the Cubs and Red Sox misery was worn like a badge of honor, the Giants suffered in silence. Kudos to the Giants fans who suffered for so long to be rewarded so greatly. Fourth up is a fan base that I think everyone would put first in a ranking of most insufferable. You love them, you hate them, you love to hate them. Please welcome the New York Yankees. Their opening index value of three was only because the Nationals were brand new and the Marlins and D-backs were still in the infancy of a franchise, yet had both secured World Series rings. Coming off three straight titles in the late 90s, our index actually finds them in one of their historically worst positions. They are currently in the midst of their longest ever World Series appearance drought, but a new stadium, a title in 09, and consistent playoff appearances has made sure that we are still living in a world where it's World Series or bust for the Yankees and their fans. They may be insufferable, but their ownership puts their money where their mouth is, and to consistently turn out a winning product. Even though you would never know it if you listen to their fans, the Yankee fans are in the top five least miserable fan bases. Rounding out our top five, we head back out west to visit sunny LA and the Dodgers. Coming into immediate success after their move to California, the Dodgers opened with an initial misery index of 10. They hadn't won since 88, but they had won early and often in their years since moving. Their current score of 7 lets us leave the truly blessed for the just plain happy fandoms. The Dodgers were a team in crisis throughout much of the index and saw their fan base crater to an index score of 51 in 2015. But by then the writing was already on the wall and the success of the new ownership's plan and the left arm of Clayton Kershaw would soon turn that number around. Having spent only two seasons in Justifiably Unhappy, their consistent deep playoff runs, award winners, and a World Series title, Mickey Mouse or not, would push them to this top five spot. An award or two mixed with a deep playoff run could see this team enter the rarefied air of the negative zone as soon as next season. 
right on the heels of the Dodgers and looking to make their own move into the negative zone are the fans of the Atlanta Braves. There's no team that gives my Mets more fits than the Braves, but this isn't about that. This is about letting them know how good they have it, and they shouldn't dare complain or think they are good fans because of how easy they have it. No, wait. Stop. The Braves have been chugging along as a great team for near 30 years now, with only small stops in the bottom of the division. Their initial index value of 12 was based mostly on their long World Series drought of the 70s and 80s. The Braves were undergoing a rebuild for the mid-aughts and saw their index value bottom out at 72 in 2017, as their early postseason exits couldn't hold back the suffering meter from rising. But a new stadium, some awards, and of course a World Series title would turn that all around, as they now sit with a Braves misery index low of just 8, and with this season going according to plan, they could be poised to be the next team welcome to the negative zone as early as next season. Up next, we have our first team from the AL West and our first team with double digits of misery. With a current score of 21, the Astros are firmly entrenched in Happy Town. If you think that's too low for a team having so recently won two World Series, I would just remind you that they had a 50-plus year World Series drought, giving them an initial index value of 25 and an index high of 103 in 2016. They dug themselves a hole so deep it's amazing they recovered so quickly. It took a combination of Cy Young's Rookie of the Year's deep playoff runs and World Series victories just to make that possible. One more series win, and they are also a negative zone team. To go from the depths of misery to the elated in such a short amount of time is truly an impressive feat, cheating scandal or not. Again, we aren't judging the teams here. We're looking at how miserable their fans are, and I doubt that you would find too many miserable Astros fans. Our next fan base is technically our newest. Starting in 2005, the Nationals fan began with an index value of zero. Difficult years lay ahead, but their index high of 39, the year before they won it all, has never truly tested the Washington fan base. I know they had some brutal years and even more brutal postseason losses, but they don't have the longevity to have ever truly suffered. The emergence of Harper and Strasburg kept the fans hopeful in the lean years. As a fan base that has just won the World Series, I would say enjoy your time in Happy Town, because the current team looks like a group that might knock you out of it for a while. And while we have been looking at the teams that have crawled out of them up, we will soon be meeting the teams that seem that they will be mired in it forever. So enjoy it now, as we will see you in misery real soon. Our last fans in Happy Town are those of the Philadelphia Phillies. If any team in the NL could break the misery index, it's the Phillies. Years of high achieving teams culminating in a World Series victory, followed by bottom of the division finishes, only to make a miraculous run back to the series. The Phillies fans shouldn't be as happy as they are, but the numbers are the numbers, and the Phillies have proved to be a productive team for their fans. With the aforementioned title, a new stadium, Rookie of the Year winners, and an MVP, the Phillies started with an index value of 24 and have pushed themselves up into the top 10. The Phillies spent half a decade in the negative zone, but have used up all that goodwill, and even with their run to the World Series last year, their eager spending habits can't keep their index score from rising. They had the third highest payroll in the league and still only finished third in the division. Their crazy scheme of screw defense could just work. Hell, it almost did last year. This is a team that could go either way. A World Series win gets them right back to the edge of the negative zone, but a poor finish in the division, and they will continue their slog through Happy Town, right into the waiting arms of their rivals in New York sitting in misery. We have now officially left Happy Town and are entering fan bases that are justifiably unhappy. This might be a top 10 team on the misery index, but make no mistake, this is an unhappy fan base, if they even have fans. Let me preface this entry by stating once again that we are not ranking teams. We are ranking how miserable teams' fans can justifiably be, because there is no list on earth that would rank these fans as a top 10 fan base. They are simply a top 10 least miserable fan base. Okay, with that being said, let's say hello to the Miami Marlins. The Marlins' initial index value was one. They were a 10-year-old team with two rings, and fire sales don't factor into these calculations. If there's one thing Jeffrey Loria and David Sampson didn't do, it was throw good money after bad. If they spent and it didn't go well, they bailed, and this kept their off-the-field score from tanking them. Even though they have rarely had success on the field, they got the most out of the money they did spend and would consistently finish number one in their division in the off-the-field calculations of dollars per win over 60. Couple that with a new stadium and some award winners, and the Marlins fans are not treated nearly as badly as they are perceived. It seems that there just may truly be no Marlins fans. According to the index, the Marlins fans couldn't even justifiably call themselves unhappy until after the 2021 season. The Marlins are thought of rarely, but when they are, they shouldn't be considered a bad team. They should be thought of as a sad team. The index says they are a justifiably unhappy fan base, and that may be true, but I think they are actually just a missing fan base. So if you're a Marlins fan, go ahead and be unhappy, but you need to recruit some of your friends. An empty stadium is just embarrassing. Our next unhappy fan base are the neighbors to our last, but heading in the opposite direction, the Tampa Bay Rays. With the initial index value of 4, they play in the big money spending AL East and have had to find a way to compete without the money. Because
Because if I just ripped into the Marlins fans for not supporting their team, how can the same not be said of the Rays fans? Yes, they play in a shithole, and they lived at the bottom of the division for a decade. But this is not the past, and the Rays are among the most envied teams in baseball. But they just can't get over that last hump and win the whole damn thing. Their off-the-field score has been 0 or 1 more than any other team in baseball. To get a 0, you need to have the best dollars spent to wins above 60 ratio in the division and make the playoffs. This is not easy. While 24 of the 30 major league teams have done this, the Rays have done it 7 times, matched only by the Guardians and the A's. The Rays have been dropping from their high water mark of 64 in 2019. They are poised to make a run at Happy Town. So jump on the bandwagon now while there is room, and you just might ride this into a new stadium, complete with a one-way ticket to the negative zone. Up next is a team right behind the Rays in the Misery Index, but one that doesn't seem to have the great and hopeful future, the Minnesota Twins. Bolstered by a new stadium, a few great years in the presence of Mauro Murnau has kept this fan base from tanking, but a combination of the evil empire and too many seasons at the bottom of the division, the Twins are lucky to be playing in the Central Division. It's really been feast or famine for this team, and whenever the feast comes to town, the party ends quickly once the playoffs arrive. The Twins fans find themselves firmly in the justifiably unhappy, with a score of 68, their highest of the index. They need to turn things around by making a deep playoff run and getting some awards out of their players if they want to avoid the misery that awaits them in the next level of hell. We are now approaching the gates of misery. A few teams find themselves just outside of town, hoping for a savior to send them back in the right direction. Our next team has two such saviors, and have somehow squandered them both. The Angels are a team without a city, a direction, or a purpose. The misery index cannot quantify for the lost career of Trout or the eventual loss of Otani, but it can calculate just how miserable it is to be an Angels fan for the last 18 years, and that calculation is 73. Coming off 2000 two World Series win, they entered the index with a score of just six, and were a consistently mediocre team watching their index value rise. Like a frog in boiling water, their score has slowly crept up from Happy Town to the gates of misery, and if they lose Otani, it won't be reflected directly in the index, but we will all know that if they don't win this year, that day will mark their entrance into misery, and we will welcome them with open arms. Our two Chicago teams are up next both with a score of 74. They've had very similar trajectories, and while people have always had a soft spot for the lovable losers, it was the White Sox who broke their curse first. The Cubs and the White Sox are the same team, but one is beloved and the other forgotten. They both entered the index, riding the two longest World Series droughts in baseball. Coming in with scores of 28 and 29, the White Sox won it all in 2005 to propel them out of misery and into Happy Town, where they would squander all that goodwill, re-entering the land of the justifiably unhappy after the 2017 season. Ironic just after their crosstown rivals were breaking their own hundred-year-old curse. And while I would admit it must have been a satisfaction I cannot comprehend for both teams who for generations hadn't seen a winner, one World Series cannot fix 100 years of misery. The White Sox had recently been pushing their numbers back down, but a disastrous 2022 season met head-on with the rebuilding Cubs, and now it's a race to escape from the mouth of the void that is misery. We wish you good luck, but you both know where you belong, and we will be happy to have you back soon enough. Well, that's the halfway mark. 15 down, 15 to go. Only two teams left before we officially enter Misery. But even if the numbers don't bear it out, we know that these two teams have permanent parking spots in Misery waiting for them. In part two, we get to the truly sad teams as we enter Misery and see what lays beyond. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.